Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, today I brought Jits to talk a little bit about satellite imagery. Uh, one of the new add-ons we have released uh, yeah, at the end of last year uh, and have been continuously improving over the last couple of months. So maybe good to do a quick introduction of ourselves. Uh, I also did the previous uh, uh, recording uh, and I'm uh, the commercial director of Farm21 and one of the co-founders. And Jits, do you also want to introduce yourself? Yes. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Jits. I'm a data analyst at uh, Farm21, uh, also a part-time uh, arable farmer. That uh, gives me the opportunity to also uh, use all our Farm21 technology in the field directly, which is uh, very nice. And uh, yeah, I focused a lot on the satellite data that we uh, created. Yeah, cool. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your your background. So, what did you do in the past, and and what what kind of education that you, did you have? Yeah. So, uh, because of the arable farm that we we have, I was always always interested in agriculture. I studied uh, agricultural technology in uh, Wageningen at Wageningen University. Um, that also focused a lot on precision farming. Uh, and since uh, my studies, I worked uh, here as a precision farmer, uh, precision farming researcher at Wageningen University. Uh, and now I work for uh, about uh, one and a half year at Farm21 as the data analyst, focusing on all the data within the company that comes in and that we uh, provide to our users. I, uh, hope to make sure that all the data is uh, correct and interesting uh, for our users uh, yeah, to see and to uh, interpret. Yeah, cool. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's also good to talk a little bit about why uh, we have started to look at satellite imagery. Uh, because until recently, uh, yeah, we had our weather data, we had our scouting information, sensor data, obviously. Um, uh, cultivation plants uh, and and last year we introduced this satellite imagery uh, can you maybe quickly summarize for us why that's an important data source for, for the platform and and maybe as for a farmer or a researcher or a crop advisor in general yeah well uh, I think the first and main thing is that it's very easy easy data you don't have to install a sensor you don't have to go into the field and do your scoutings you can just uh, create your account on Farm21, uh, draw in your fields. And then the only thing that you have to do is wait uh, until the satellite flies over and takes a picture of your fields to get some information. Uh, and once you did that, it continuous, continuously um, gets all the images and you don't have to do anything for it. So that's a very easy uh, data source that gives information. And besides that, it's not point data, like a sensor measures at one point. Uh, maybe you have two sensors, then you measure at two points, but you don't really get the image of your whole field. And with uh, satellite data, you really get an image from above and you can see all the different uh, corners. You can see the whole field in one, um, in one look. So that's uh, really interesting to see uh, which parts are uh, laying behind or which parts are growing really well. So um, that gives a good indication of how your field is, is performing uh, and you can easily compare different fields. So uh, that makes it yeah, very interesting to look at, uh, at the satellite data. Not a lot yeah. of effort, but a lot of insights. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I guess uh, you mean not a lot of effort uh, on, on the user side, but uh, we, we have put quite some effort into it, I think. Uh, and, and maybe it's interesting for the audience to know, like how, how does that even work? So, so we have a lot of satellites flying over the earth. Um, which ones are we using? Uh, why are we using them? And, and how do we make, make like these maps we have in the platform from them? Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, so um, we use two types of satellites. We don't uh, brought in the satellites into the sky ourselves. Uh, we get satellite data from the Sentinel satellite and from uh, Planetscope. Uh, Sentinel gives images with a, a pixel width 
10 by 10 meters. So that's uh, every pixel is 10 by 10 meters. And the planet scope data is higher resolution that gives um, images back with a pixel size of three by three meters. Um, so we get the raw images, uh, which uh, include a lot of colors, um, not only red, green, uh, and blue that we can uh, see with our own eyes, but also near infrared and even a uh, higher uh, bandwidth colors. So reflections basically. Um, and when we get those raw images, we combine those different bands into um, different indexes and each index yeah, shows or tells something about, uh, about the field. So for example, we show the uh, NDVI index uh, on the platform and the NDVI is uh, an, an index which shows the uh, relation between near infrared and red, where uh, red is absorbed, the red color is absorbed by green crops, and near infrared is reflected by green crops. So when you look at the relation between those two, you can see if a crop is, is green, if the crop is growing. And uh, so it's basically an indication for the biomass that's on your field. And um, if you have a high NDVI, NDVI index, uh, you can see that there is a lot of biomass. And when it's low, uh, yeah, well, then there is uh, not that much biomass on your field. And so yeah. in that way, you can see the differences between, um, yeah, between uh, how your crops are performing on the field. So that's yeah. one of the indexes that we calculate with the different reflection bands from, uh, from those satellites. Yeah, sounds interesting. And then uh, I guess those those satellites uh, fly over a lot. Uh, and and uh, yeah, f for some satellites we get uh, an image every day, and for the Sentinel satellite satellite it's a little bit less often. Um, and uh, yeah, I was also wondering about clouds. Like you have some solutions in the market that uh, don't show images if there are any clouds. Uh, uh, I've heard something about cloud filters. I think we, we have that in the platform as well. Um, and yeah. and is, is that based on, on, on an existing theory or something? Or, or, or how does that work, those, those cloud filters? Yeah, well, so uh, first, uh, to come back to your first comment, um, the Sentinel satellites, so that's with the lower resolution of 10 by 10 meters, and uh, those satellites fly over every uh, five days on average. Um, so you could have an image every five days. Uh, but of course, when there is a cloud, well, you have an image of the top of a cloud, which is not very interesting. And the PlanetScope satellite imagery with a higher resolution, and there are uh, about 180 of those satellites flying around the Earth. So um, on average, they should visit uh, every day uh, one satellite should visit your field. Uh, so you could have every day an image. Um, it's it's on average. So sometimes you have two images on one day and then the other day you don't have an image. And when there are clouds, of course, there are no images. You can only see the top uh, of the clouds. So when the whole image is filled with clouds, it's very easy because you just see a wide image. Uh, if the image is completely filled with clouds, we don't show it. It's it's not interesting. We filter those out. But sometimes you also see that you have very small clouds and only half of your field, for example, is filled with clouds. Then we filter that part out. Uh, yeah, we we come up with came up with our own filter. Um, I think it's too much to go really into those techniques, but. Um, we can see that it's a cloud or not. And when it's a cloud, we filter that part of the field out. So we make that part gray. So um, yeah, the, the data below that cloud does not make sense. So we do not show that. But the other part of the field, which is useful, uh, we show that. So um, we try to show as much as possible. Uh, some people, they when there is even a very small cloud on the field, uh, they skip the whole image. But we say, well, part of the image is not useful, but maybe the other part is. So we just show it. And then it's up to the user to see if that information is useful or not. I can imagine that when there's only 10% of the field possible, uh, visible, it's not really interesting to look at that part. But it might be just that part that you want to see. So we choose uh, to always show 
as, as much as possible. Yeah, from, from what I understand is that uh, it's better to show a part of the field more often than nothing at all, right? Yes. And, uh, or or maybe even a wrong value because uh, there there was a cloud in it uh, and, and it does make sense to look at that cloud data because you can't always see, right? Yeah. Um, let's dive into uh, a practical example uh, because we've I think we've talked enough about uh, how we did it, why we did it. Uh, now it's time for practice. So um, yeah, maybe we can add your uh, screen to to the stream and then uh, take it from there. Uh, I will linger in the background. Uh, I may have some questions for you, but uh, please go ahead and uh, explain what we have built and why it's useful and how. Yeah, okay. Um, so what you see on the screen now is just your uh, home screen when, screen when you start uh, the Farm 21 uh, web application. Um, you can see that I already drew in some fields. Um, you can do that yourself. And that's the only thing that you need to do to get the satellite imagery. Um, we can look at uh, a specific field. Um, this is a sugar beet field. Um, you just click on the field. You get some more field information, the uh, latest scouting reports. And when you click on more field info, you go into the field uh, itself. Here you can see, of course, all the information of the field. And here below, you can see that uh, carousel with satellite imagery. And you can see that on the 1st of March, uh, that we have the last image. Um, between 2 and 5 March, there were no images because the satellite simply didn't fly over. And then on the 6th, 6th of March, the satellite flew over, but uh, it was too cloudy to, um, to make a proper image. So we just leave that out. But we notify that, uh, yeah, what's the reason that you don't see the image? Um, when you click on a specific date, you can see, uh, yeah, what the image, uh, you can show the image on the large screen. Um, you can see that this image is almost completely red. That's because this field is empty now, I know. Um, it's red because it's showing the NDVI index, which I explained before. Um, when the NDVI index is zero, there is uh, not a lot uh, of biomass on the field, almost nothing. And when it's one, you can see that, uh, or then the, uh, um, the field is completely filled with, with biomass. So it's basically very green. And we also show the percentage of the field that is covered with clouds. Well, this field uh, was a clear image, so no, uh, no clouds. Um, but this is, of course, not that interesting to see. So I will uh, look here in the date picker to see, um, to get a right image. Uh, we go back to the previous season, uh, 2022. Well, I know that uh, the sugar beets were sown in, in April. So I will uh, select quite a broad date range. You can see that it's loading all the images. And you can see that there are already uh, yeah, quite some images. Uh, for example, if we take this image from the 1st of July, uh, we can see that there is a lot more biomass than the previous one. And this is interesting because now you can also see some variation in growth. We can see that there's uh, yeah, a lot of biomass on the largest part of the field, but especially in this corner and uh, well, the adjacent field, which uh, was which was empty at this time, uh, you can see that there is not a lot of biomass. And those are the interesting things to see. For example, here in the middle, we can see this very uh, yeah fake line, and then you know well what what is going wrong there? Why isn't it not growing that good as as the rest of the field? Um, and some things that we see with um, with the NDVI is that it's uh, completely filled up. So when there is, uh, when the crop grows quite a lot, the biomass increases quite a lot and it's quickly grow, going from zero to one. So it's not that easy to see differences anymore. That's why we also um, inserted some other biomass indexes. You can see that with this drop down, we can also select WDVI, um, which is much lower and that corrects a bit for, for soil that's still coming through. And it's not going that fast from zero to one. So we can see a li little bit more variation. So this corner, which we already saw that was falling behind is now even, uh, yeah, you can see it 
even better that it's it's falling behind and especially this row next to the other field um yeah we can see that there is not a lot of growing so that's interesting to see uh yeah that it's falling behind and we can say well let's go to that part of the field for example here in the back to see what's going on we also have the uh, ndmi index this is an index that uh, gives an indication of, of moisture in the leaves um, sugar beets are mainly uh, fully filled with water so these images are all quite uh, quite blue for example this one is is a little bit yeah less blue um, so it's already uh, the NDMI index is already lowered. So then you that's an indication that uh, the crop is getting a little bit less water than it, it wants to have. It's perfect when it's one, so it's when it's fully blue. But when it's less than one, um, yeah, your crop is starting to experience uh, some uh, uh, moisture stress. And if it's even turning orange or uh, maybe even red, then you know well there is quite a problem in your field because uh, yeah, your crops uh, are experiencing water stress well and, and you can see that there are quite a lot of images you can walk through the the whole field here uh, in may you could say well there is a little bit water shortage but then first look was there biomass well we can see the ndvi is quite red so there's not a lot of biomass so that water stress is yeah there's not really water stress because there's not a crop growing um and here on the 25th of may you can see that well my field is already filling up here there were no uh big um, crops to see but here the crops are growing and you can see that well, on this part it's growing very well and here in the back it's falling behind and then on the in june you can see oh my field is, is filling up so that's uh, really uh, interesting to see you can keep track of it um, yeah for all your fields just by uh, by seeing all those images so um, yeah that, that's very uh, very easy to see um, the images that uh, I'm showing right now are the uh, sentinel images the the the, uh, the cheap ones the free ones I even think um, and I can also show you um, the planet scope one, the higher resolution, but uh, I have to go to a different uh, field, I think. Yeah, interesting, Jits. Um, and and um, yeah, may maybe it's also a good moment to reiterate over the fact that we have two types of satellite imagery. So we have our free satellite imagery they, uh, with on a fair use base, of course. Uh, but you just draw in the field and uh, within a couple of minutes uh, or sometimes a bit longer, we are able to pull in a year worth of historical data, like, like you already said. Uh, um, and uh, we also have premium data available and that's available on request at this point. So you just email support at farm21.com and we will activate it for you. Uh, it's at an additional cost of 10 euros per hectare per year uh and and in that way you will receive way more images so do we have a good example of that as well um yes i think so i um will show a different screen um Yeah, and, and we so, talked about the different layers. So so uh, when you talked about NDMI, I uh, also thought, okay, it's good to know that, that you have this relative view available from the satellite that you know, okay, there is maybe a water problem going on there. And I guess it would be really useful to also have some sensor data, of course, uh, uh, available as well. So you know exactly uh, or more or less how much to irrigate. Uh, yeah. That. And that's interesting to see. Then you can relate those, uh, yeah, those numbers between zero and one to to real measurements. Yeah, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that later after you've shown the uh, the other screen. So, okay, yeah, um, I will put it on the. So um, this is basically the the same area but a bigger field. Um, now you can also see differences between different fields. Um, so this was the field that we 
looked at uh, before, but now in higher resolution. Um, you can immediately see here in the bottom at the carousel, you can see that there are more images available. And so this is in September. Um, but if we click uh, a little bit through time, we can see that in August, for example, we have a lot of images um, next to each other. And here is also a good example of a, an image with clouds. Um, so here you can see all these gray parts on the field. Those are clouds which are uh, filtered out. We can see that it's um, around 25% of the field that we drew in. So let me take a clear picture. And here you can also really clearly see differences in growth. Uh, for this field, the sugar beet field that I showed before, well, it's, it's quite uh, homogeneous. It's, it's quite good growth. But for other field, fields, for example, this uh, grass field, you can see that there are yeah, a lot of um, different areas in there which are, um, yeah, which are showing a lot of variation. And this potato field also, you can see uh, at the end of August, it was already dying. And you can see that, uh, well, all the potatoes are not dying at the same time. So this part is much greener than uh, these other parts. And with this higher resolution, it's, it's easier to see those differences. Yeah, quick question yet. So uh, in the previous field, you basically drew in one field. And I guess you now drew this over all your fields just for testing purposes. Normally you would like to draw it in per type of cultivation, right? Yes, yes, that's true. This was uh, just a test, but it's also interesting to see the uh, variate or the, the combinations in all one field. Um, but normally you would draw in one field per crop, of course. Yeah. So, and maybe now it's also the moment to talk about uh, the com combining data. So, uh, yeah, we already spoiled it a little bit about combining sensor data and uh, and satellite imagery together. So, so how would that work in practice? So you have these images, for for example, or or the the three images uh, with with uh, the NDMI index, and and what what then? So what will you do? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's uh, a matter of taste. There are a few options. Um, you can start maybe uh, by first drawing in your field. And for example, if you would draw in uh, this field, you can see that by the satellite uh, imagery that there is quite some variation. And to get an understanding of uh, how that variation is uh, is created or or what's causing that variation. You could say, well, now I know that I have a lot of variation within my field. Uh, I want to see if that has to do with soil moisture. And you can buy a sensor and you can put a sensor, for example, in this part of the field where it's very green. And you can put a sensor in the uh, part of the field where it's red. And then you can, um, well, you have know the variation in your field. And then you can put a sensor uh, over there to compare is the variation caused by soil moisture or not? And if it's soil moisture, then you know, well, I might have to irrigate uh, this part of the field a little bit more often than the other part of the field. So then you know what, um, uh, yeah, what that variation is causing uh, by measuring the soil moisture. Uh, you and can also use, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Quick, quick question. So, uh, if the soil moisture is different in different parts of the field, is that mostly due to uh, the, the soil type, for instance, or uh, yeah, what other factors could be in play if there's such a difference within a small field? Yeah, it, it could be um, what you are saying, uh, different soil types, but it could also be that um, if it's already variation in growth. So, if there's a big crop over here that crop is extracting a lot of water from the soil, where this part of the field, where uh, there is not many crop growth, uh, then you know maybe, well, I should irrigate on the other way around because uh, here the crop is extracting a lot of, getting a lot of water out of the soil, where this crop, which is not growing that fast, is not getting a lot of water out of the soil. So, um, yeah, it, it really depends. And that's why you need to, to measure uh, the, the, the moisture content to know, do I need to irrigate more or do I need to irrigate less? Or sh where should I put the focus? 
Yeah. Okay. And I, I guess having a sensor makes it a little bit easier, but you can, I, I, I think you can also still use the free images. And then once you see those differences, you just walk in the field and go take a look. It will cost you some yeah. time, but yeah, and the sensors could help you uh, save some of the time, uh, but yeah, up to the user, I guess. Yeah, um, that's the cheaper solution. Yeah, that's the cheap. Yeah, I don't know if it's really cheaper <laughs> if you go take a look. It depends on how how expensive you are. Yeah, uh, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. So if you but it's always good that you then uh, sorry if you have nothing better to do or if it's really close by, then it might be worth it. But if your uh, your field is a couple kilometers away, then uh, yeah, might be yeah. cheaper to have a sensor in there and and more accurate as well. And uh, it's there all the time. So uh, yeah, yeah. And 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 I guess uh, yeah we we also have weather data so uh, I I think that can also help you to know if you should uh, bring your irrigation pumps out or not. Uh, yeah, so you can see that they are expecting uh, rain today, uh, so you don't have to irrigate today. And also in the next few days, some rain is expected. So um, yeah. If this was the cause right now, you would not uh, start irrigating directly. Yeah, interesting. And and do you have any more thoughts about different data sources we can combine with the satellite imagery uh, for maybe the, not now, but maybe the, in the future? So that's more what are we building on top of the satellite data that could be useful or on the combined data set? Yeah, so we are uh, looking, uh, first thing we're looking into is dividing these all these different colors into different zones so that you know uh, okay this part of the field is a high zone uh, with good crop growth and the other part of the field is um, a lower zone where your crop growth is falling behind that makes it easier to interpret than all these different color gradients um, but we can also uh, combine it in the future with uh, for example um, height maps so that you know uh, this part of the field is um, a little bit higher than the other part of the field and that influences uh, where the water goes so um, if it's very dry you often see that on the lower parts of your field there is still more water than on the higher parts because yeah the water runs down basically to the lower parts and uh, the other way around it also drowns easier when it's very wet on those lower parts uh, instead of the higher part. So that's also an, a really interesting source to um, to look at. Um, yeah, we, we are uh, also looking into different uh, soil maps uh, on the uh, on the background to see, yeah, is my uh, deviation caused by um, uh, different soil types or is it something else? So those are also different options that we want to combine with this uh, satellite data. Yeah, and, and uh, we're, we're also working on these uh, risk models, of course, continuously. So so one of the first ones, uh, I think that that's going to be released. The first is, is water risk. And in the beginning, that will mainly be based on sensor readings and weather information, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then uh, the soil type that the user fills in um, really determines yeah, what stress levels there are. And, uh, how uh, how much stress is caused by water shortage? Yeah, and and is satellite also going to play a role in that, or or uh, maybe in another type of analysis we can make? Yeah, we uh, we will um, put that NDMI layer that I also showed. We will also use that to uh, yeah to combine it with sensor data to give give also a better yeah spatial uh, indication of the soil moisture how that's distributed on your field. Yeah, cool. And uh, anything more we will do with satellite? Uh, and, and any dreams you have for, for the satellite imagery? Well, there are a lot of possibilities, of course. Um, we don't have any concrete uh, steps uh, ahead, but uh, we will um, use a lot of satellite data in the future. Yeah, yeah sounds cool. Uh, and I guess more and more satellite pro uh, satellite providers are coming and launching their own satellites. And uh, yeah, as far as I know, we're continuously looking towards these to see if we can also incorporate in them in our platform. Uh, so yeah, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, 
better uh, more satellite data is always good <laughs> yeah better more and cheaper right yes <laughs> yeah okay so yeah thanks a lot yes uh i think this this was it for today uh and uh yeah uh, for more data related topics uh, we will uh, talk again um so yeah thank you everyone for watching and uh, see you uh, next time